ओम सदा शिव समारंभ शंकराचार्य वर्तमान अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओम सहना भगवत सहनौन सा वीर कर्वा वही तेजस्वीनावती तमस्तुमा विषा वही ओम शां शांत शांति सो आज वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग इन द लास्ट क्लास आफ्टर दिस सटल बॉडी सूक्ष्म शरीर ऑल्सो वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट प्राण द फंक्शन ऑफ द प्राण एंड वेर वी आर आइड दैट नॉट ओनली द प्राण जॉब इज एक्सरेसन ऑनिंग स्टीचिंग एंड वॉट नॉट ऑल्सो दैट असाना पिपास सो दैट मीन्स हंगर एंड ऑल्सो थर्स्ट इज द पार्ट ऑफ प्राणस फंक्शन सो दैट वी सॉ वेरी क्लियर वे सो हाउ हो ह्यो आफ्टर डिस्कसिंग दैट पॉइंट नाउ टू आर आई बट हाउ ऑल दिस थिंग्स हैपन्स ऑल्सो वी नीड टू लुक एट सो लेट एस लुक एट मंकी हंस का ओके See, showing his teeth and very nicely. Okay, think something is going on here. <coughs> so anyway, good. So now let us look at what is ego and how it works. So let us see few verses. Anta karana me teshu chakshura di su varshmani. चक्षुरादि Starting with eyes means all sense organs put together. Now starting with eye, ear, nose, tongue, skin. So there is something called identification. So here it says, "Aham iti abhimani no abhasa tejasa." So what happens is here. So the me is being reflected called pratibimba. so now because of the reflection which we have seen in details clearly in panchadashi first chapter very clear discussion we had elaborately so that's why here it says when this reflection or reflected i i would rather say reflected self that is gets that gets identified with all the sense organs of course that is in me in this body now because of that region you see a change in the approach so what is that change in approach because nothing was the next verse ahankara sabigeya कर्ता भुक्ताुणयोगेन चावस्थात्रयमश्मुते एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस नाउ स्टार्ट्स कॉल अहंकार स अहंकार मीन्स अहम करो करोवीति भाव दैट आई डू इन शॉर्ट व्हाट वी कॉल एज ईगो 
सो हियर इट इज अहंकार स विज्ञेय सो मे वन नो इट इट इज टू बी नोन विज्ञेय टू नो व्हाट इज दैट दैट इज कॉल्ड अहंकार एंड दिस अहंकार डजेंट कीप क्वाइट ईगो डजेंट कीप क्वाइट फर्स्ट इज रिफ्लेक्टेड आई इफ इट कीप्स क्वाइट दैट इज नो प्रॉब्लम एट ऑल बट द मोमेंट दैट इज ईगो नाउ दिस अहंकार विच इज नथिंग बट रिफ्लेक्टेड सेल्फ like the sun that is reflected on a pot water so in on a pot there is water or oil or whatever there is a reflecting surface sun reflects so there is a sun now that sun actually is a reflection now what does it happens now you can say look sun is dirty sun is uh, in a dirty place sun is in a holy place actually sun is neither in dirty place not in holy place it is reflected now because of that identification how it happens here now self is being attached to the body self is reflected in mind especially please understand because of the reflection there is attachment and the reflection can happen only in a medium which medium can reflect that's why subtle body is the means in the gross body the self cannot get reflected so that's why because why it cannot be reflected also if you look at the gross body is made up of tamas predominantly so self to get reflected means sattva guna <coughs> that's also another way of looking at however <coughs> here it says sattva adi guna yogena that abhiman so here this ahankara the ego so when it gets identified and of course in keeping with sattva raja and tamaguna three three qualities and of course in avastha traya in three different states waking dream and deep sleep this analysis also deep sleep analysis we have done in panchadashi there is says there is a point sometimes also they experiences what does sometimes this person becomes karta sometimes it becomes bhokta so karta means doer bhokta means angel so that means in short the ego cannot keep quiet so ego based on the situation based on my guna either remains as bhakta or becomes karta it is like very rare to find out a quiet monkey meditative monkey mindfulness monkey unless that fellow has got some problem always will be busy some way or other so also this karta the ego this identified let us say reflected i when it gets identified cannot keep quiet either it has to be karta or bhokta that's why in our life all the time we keep shifting or you can say all our roles that we play in our day to day life either it is connected to the sense of angership or to the sense of doers in fact all our role is directly connected to sense of angership kartutva bhav sorry bhaktutva bhav but we nicely name it we nicely shift it to kartutva bhav is my duty it's like you know sometimes we give the definition of duty to the greed have you not observed my greed becomes my sense of duty because without the sense of doers there cannot be sense of angels 
बिकॉज ओनली द सेंस ऑफ एंजर्स आई मेड मिस्टेक विदाउट सेंस ऑफ एंजर्सिप दर कैन नॉट बी सेंस ऑफ डूअरशिप विदाउट दर इज सेंस ऑफ एंजर्सिप हाउ कैन आई स्टार्ट डूइंग एनीथिंग That's why all my actions, all my activities, only backed up by endures. When I discover that I no more can enjoy, will I do anything? Will I be interested to do anything? It will not work. That is how people. That is how the things functions in life. So that's why what is to be done. So what one need to do is very nicely. That is what. One has to do is here. So, <clears throat> what one should do? Let us look at how it works. Let us read the next. Bishya nama nu kulle, sukhi dukhi vi pariyaye, sukham dukham chata dharma. सदानंदरीजन नाउ समाइम्स आई एम सुखी Sometimes I am dukhi. Sometimes I am happy. Of course, sometimes I am miserable. If it is sometimes, sometimes fifty fifty, I can understand. Sometimes sixty forty also I can understand. Okay. <laughs> Probably is I myself do not know. Okay. Somebody said nicely. My life is dukhi, 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 dukhi. One scene where dukhi. Then again dukhi, 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 dukhi. Dukhi, dukhi, dukhi. So only I am looking at the ray from a distance. When this will come, this happiness will come, and the whole life is nothing. Just looking at the ray, sukham is going to come. <laughs> and when sukham comes and goes, that also I do not notice. Okay, that's the most painful thing. How? <laughs> so sometimes. But some people say no, no. So I mean, say life is like sukham, 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 sukham all the time. Sukham, sukham, happiness, happiness. Once in a while, the sukham comes. Hey, you are lucky guy. Okay, <laughs> enjoy. Don't tell anybody. Don't share anybody because they other will be jealous of you. Okay. <laughs> How? So the life is mixture of sukham, dukham. And why? He says, look, bisayam, bisayanam, anukulli. And be pariyaye. This is the two point comes. So that means it's very clear. When the sense organs and sense objects. So bishara means mean here is sense objects. They are favorable. So in short, if the sense objects are available according to me, according to my wish, according to my way. So that means what? I am happy. And of course, if they are not favorable, opposite be for you, automatically I become what? Miserable. So that means what? Happiness or misery? Is it related to me or is it related to my ego? so that is the point he says look very nicely cha tad dharma sadanandasya na atmanah he says but look this sukham and dukham is the nature of the ego tad dharma so if i am happy it is because of my ego If I am unhappy, it is because of my ego. So that means happiness and unhappiness has nothing to do with me. And who is me? I am not ordinary me. Sadhananda, who is ever happy. If you observe very nicely, we say 
that time you consider or you look for both you look for freedom or you consider that you are a free person when you think that you were bound or you are bound if you are not bound will you look for freedom because there is you will not know what is do you know bondage only when you know that you are bound or you feel that you are bound you will look for freedom so that means whenever you look for freedom or you say that you are a free person that means either you feel that you are in bondage or you feel that you had some bondage suppose if you are ever free not suppose this is the truth if you are ever free now will you say that hey look i am a free person will you look for freedom so this is sadananda my nature is ever free my nature is ever happy but unfortunately because of the identification with this mind and body complex instead of body mind complex mind and body complex opposite to it now i consider as my reflected self which is called ego through ego now i attribute the happiness or unhappiness to me that's why always i want to be happy in keeping with all the sense objects so all my happiness is related to my sense objects so also all my unhappiness also equally related to my sense objects either absence or presence so whole life is nothing but working with my likes and dislikes in short or you can say working with all the sense objects which is being created by me especially giving importance to them so that's why here is very clearly being used so me being happy has nothing to do with me me being unhappy has nothing to do with me but it has directly to do with my ego my individuality and that's why we say the stronger i have individuality the more i am either happy or unhappy so whoever keeps jumping hey you understand hey the thirty to teeth hey you understand this is called jumping with happiness and unhappiness definitely you can see that person has got more ego that's why the stability this is what you can see the matured person looks at situation in a matured way the problem with all of us is we want instant everything and without knowing or instead of, uh, 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 sorry there is nothing called instant we know even if there is instant coffee available there is instant noodles available everything available okay not that not all but in reality there is nothing called instant because to get this instant noodle must have done some processing or not even if what we say instant coffee i do not know how they make instant coffee the process some process must have done before because without going through prior process there cannot be something called instant so but we all look for instant and that to nothing wrong it but without going through any process you understand how is it possible so that's why he says sadananda sih na atmana that means this happiness and unhappiness happiness or unhappiness they do not belong to the atman which is sadananda ever happy ever free then what is all about it what is it? why you people are looking for different love different things then why we are crazy for sense objects people relationship beautifully two verses highlights 
of course which is related to upanishadic teaching and we'll see where very nicely our uh, <coughs> what do you call yagyabalka and his wife uh, maitre teaching goes navare patyu so that goes on and on we'll see that point okay let us look at the verse आत्मर्थत्वेन हि प्रियान विषयो न स्वतः प्रिय स्वत हि सर्वेशा आत्मा प्रियतमो यत आत्मा सदानंदो नास्य दुखम कदाचना सच बेटे बोले इफ यू लुक एट होल लाइफ वी लुक एट लुक दैट पर्सन इज डियर टू मी दैट पर्सन इज प्लेजर टू मी बट रिमेंबर ऑल दिस थिंग्स इज नॉट बिकॉज़ द पर्सन इज प्लेजर और डियर इट इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ वन सोन सेल्फ एज द स्टोरी द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ गोस दैट मैत्रेय वन ऑफ द great lady of vedic era who happens to the wife of yagyamalika so when yagyamalika as a great says wanted to go for a sanyasa so whatever assets he had he thought of to distribute among two wives so that let them live their life so can go for sanyasa and that time maitri asked why you are going to? that means there is something better <laughs> when you are distributing the small small things with us and you are going away that means there is something better so what is that better i would like to know <laughs> so that is how the teaching started very nice teaching so that is being presented here that uh, in short a wife is not dearer to the husband for the sake of wife but for the sake of wife so also the husband is not dearer to wife for the sake of wife, uh, husband but the for sake of wife also finally says that navare sarvasya priyam bhavati atmanastu kamaya sarvam priyam bhavati so even if anything and everything that you see that is not dear to one's own self not because of that object or that person but because of one's own self because i am dear to myself that's why everything is dear to me this is the teaching in fact i cannot forget this teaching was very nicely manipulated by somebody people are very capable of you know putting their teaching this is called you know new age teaching okay yes you can see this is what i understand without knowing teaching i know it how you look I like that person wherever I see my ego, <laughs> or whoever fulfills my ego. Can you see this point? I like that object. That object, that person is dearer to me wherever my ego is being fulfilled or addressed. Can you see this point? Self, na? Ego is self. <laughs> If the person is not fulfilling my ego. is not relating my with you, relating with my ego will i like that person definitely i don't like so whole world looks for what only relate with that person where ego is being addressed ego is being taken care of so if the ego is being challenged will you like that person that's why you say as long if you nourish somebody's ego that person will say i love you honey i love you the moment you challenge that fellow what is it i hate you to the core you understand <laughs> this is like this because i notice it i hate you to the core i do not know what is that core okay <laughs> so is it core uh, in the core um, uh, mind core core or it is the core of this a log of wood okay <laughs> i do not understand okay that i have my funny understanding implicating to that however but it's not like that here is being highlighted little carefully that please understand atmarthatvarehi 
priyan vishaya whenever you say something is dear to you that is giving you priyamit dear not pleasure giving which is dear to you it is because of you because you are there the self is there i am pleasurable and when i know i am happy in short everything is everything becomes the object of happiness when i am unhappy anything and everything is unhappy and moreover whatever is the source of happiness it is nothing but reflection of me and whatever is source of unhappiness is again is nothing but a reflection of me so the happiness and unhappiness that is even the dharma of my ego please understand but i always look at everything as what either source of happiness or unhappiness but in reality that whatever we see all are related to me that's why what i need to do because me is being manifested through them me means here the self because me is being manifested through them that's why sense objects are pleasure or they are dearer to me and of course they don't have any independent existence that's why what i need to do me being the most beloved me being the most dearer one to myself i need not run behind any object or people in my life because the more i run behind a person the more of course object is better because object doesn't have do you know that much uh consent uh, that's not do you know uh, this thing uh, what do you call consent uh, okay uh, that sort of knowledge or that sort of things to understand you and wrong but definitely the road more you run behind a person the person starts you know demanding more and more or not i see very clearly we have a dog here the more you try to run behind that fellow more goes away and when you when you do not look at that fellow comes and lies down in front of the and in such a place lies down so that you should ha- you don't have any other choice other than you know looking at that fellow in front of the gate lies down will not get up so because it feels unwanted so that means want some attention but whenever i try my best hey get up or do something look at we will go so as though i have to chase that fellow moment i come out will run behind him i don't know what sort of pride of the i have with that dog now okay so few days back he is here last one and one and a half months more than that he is here now not going and completely free goes everywhere and everywhere i can come and lie down i do not know i am tired of it and when i am not here he observes comes up mess mess little bit here and there and goes down <laughs> this is new now <laughs> how coming back to the point is this is joke apart okay so here what happens is that means i need not run behind anybody or anything for my happiness but the problem with all of us is we think that person that object will give me happiness and when we see that this person or that person is going to give me happiness that never happens and in fact we become more and more weaker because when i look at somebody as the source of happiness if i look at something as the source of happiness finally i get only frustrated beaten up in my life 
So that is what is being highlighted. Me being the most beloved to myself. That means the nature of me is most beloved to all of us, to me, to you, to everybody. That means what? Please understand. This me who is always Sadananda, ever happy. That means Dukkham is not there at all. So this misery or difficult, okay, you can say misery or suffering or grief is not the part of me at all. So that means I need not be unhappy anytime in my life. And whenever I am unhappy, my unhappiness is related to my ego, reflected self, not me. So what is the reflected self? Reflected self is not nothing but me, the self is being identified with body-mind complex. So when my self is being considered or I consider myself as body-mind complex, that is also another way of looking at, easiest way of looking at, when I come to a conclusion that I am body-mind complex, I am fat, I am thin, body. Mind, I am doctor, engineer, blah, blah, blah. So all these things. So when I look at myself that I am body-mind complex, so that me called ego has to go through suffering. Now that body wants another body. That mind wants another body. And not only that, that mind and body wants many objects to become happy. And finally what happens? Only keeps changing the people and object but never becomes happy. That's why more the person grows, more becomes helpless in life. Sometimes it looks like, you know, life started with helplessness. At least that there was hope. But later on, same helplessness continues without hope. <laughs> this is the, do you know, achievement we all have, you understand? When we started our life, means as a child, of course we are helpless, okay? No doubt in it. But there is hope. But now as we grow old, what happens? Same helplessness continues without hope. So that means hopeless, helpless. So that you call as converting your helplessness situation into hopeless is called growth. And you have achieved many things. You have gathered many things. You have lived your life in different ways. You have exposed yourself in different ways. For what? Just to make sure the state of helplessness must be with sense of hopeless. <laughs> what a beautiful way of presenting one's own self. Can you see this point? That's why understanding this actually helps very carefully. How and especially when the suffering comes, how to withdraw from the sense object one's oneself, especially the ego. The moment there is some suffering, the moment, whenever, learning to withdraw this ego reflected self from the sense object. And if that is being done carefully, and how it can be done? Understanding that, look, I am not the reflected self. I am the self, which is Sadananda, Sachidananda. That's why the teaching helps. And when you start abiding with more and more teaching, automatically the self, the, the ego becomes weaker. And when ego becomes weaker, then automatically what happens? You will not give that much importance or you will not depend upon what? The sense object. Can you see this point? Because sense object cannot have that much strength. Teaching takes care of that part. Sense objects are useful. They are needed. No doubt in it. They are not useless at all. But with their limitations. 
that's why we say life should be exactly like you know Padma Patra Eva Ambaza how the water drop is on lotus leaf if you observe the lotus leaf inside the water born in water grows up in water and even if there is a drop of water on lotus leaf remember lotus leaf is untouched by water it's a very amazing thing to observe so also the life and that can happen when i am with the teaching let us look at the next verse yat su sutta nirvishaya atmanando nubhuyate smriti pratyaksha mautiham anumanam cha jagrate says beautifully if we try to observe यत् सुसुप्त निर्विषय आत्मानंद नंद अनुभूयते इति एक्चुअली दिस मी बीइंग हैप्पी हैज नथिंग टू डू विथ सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट बट मी बीइंग अनहैप्पी हैज समथिंग टू डू विथ सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट ओके मी बीइंग हैप्पी has nothing to do with sense object but me being unhappy definitely has something to do with sense object <laughs> why how he says in deep sleep in susupti avastha susupto in deep sleep definitely there is no vishaya there is no sense object because there is no sense of doership nor sense of enjoyership that's why you say what ah oh, i had a good sleep after getting up okay so that means when there is no object sense object you don't experience any sense object but you are able to experience and happiness that's why each one of us wants to sleep you may not eat for one day if food is not being provided for one or two days you can manage it drinking water or something or other imagine if two days you don't go sleep get sleep will you go crazy or not sometimes body does not need sleep but mind needs sleep because you want to be happy you understand so at least every day without thinking four to five hours or six hours we are happy it's a big 30% of life is happiness okay <laughs> problem is i don't get sleep that's the problem somebody says i don't get sleep okay <laughs> only i mm, please learn to sleep okay <laughs> that's why he says beautifully it is not it says how it is it is the declaration of shruti he scripture also says pratyaksha means directly also we do experience aitiham tradition anumana inference after getting up also and of course try to see this thing with reference to jagrat avastha now please understand this point when we try to see this that how i can be happy without any sense objects especially not looking for not depending upon sense objects during my sleep so also i can be happy without anybody anything in my life that's why what we do is generally we try to withdraw ourselves from everybody whenever there is chaos in life the best way to handle the chaos chaotic life is learning to withdraw from anybody and everybody that moment 
But generally what we do, we don't withdraw, we selectively switch over. That's the problem with all of us. It is like from our childhood we go through. When, because I have done this thing, this is a natural thing, okay? You don't have to. When father scolds, go to mother. When mother scolds, goes to father. When both of them scold, go to grandparents. <laughs> and if whole family scolds, go to the neighbor, okay? <laughs> and if neighbor scolds, go to village. <laughs> we have a different level, okay? Don't worry. <laughs> Or go to somebody's, some relative house, okay, run away from everybody. So they will take care of you, okay? <laughs> Few days, no problem, don't worry. So what we do, selectively, conveniently, we sit. Now that also we do till we grow, till we die. So if there is some issue in me, now I sort myself in that area with that way of thinking. Now I switch over. It's like, no, I want to continue the television. One program I saw, I didn't like it. So what I do, let me change the channel, okay? <laughs> it is like exactly, you have all the news channel, okay? Please don't misunderstand. You are a news person, especially in India, okay? You are a news fellow. So you want to see news. You saw one channel, that fellow is talking some nonsense. So, okay, now you really fed up, you change to another new channel. What you will see? Few minutes, few things different. After that, again, the same new sense or not? I don't see any difference, okay? Only the anchor changes, but same voice, same clip. Sometimes the worst part is same video clip, okay? <laughs> so, how, even if you change one channel to another channel, you think? You will be able to get rid of that video clip. Nothing you are going to get rid of it. Same thing also in our life we do the same thing. That's why the best thing would be when there is some conflict. Better to withdraw for some time. And while withdrawing, make sure that you are not being misunderstood. That is the key point. While withdrawing, make sure that you are not being misunderstood. Because if you are being misunderstood, again to do the repairing, it will take more time. You understand? That damage is forever. So never ever allow yourself to be misunderstood. So that preparation, that maturity one should have. It is like exactly, for example, I can give you a beautiful example. Let us say I am not happy. In my case, I can say, if I am not happy, I can announce all of you, hey, look, I would like to, sometime, I want to spend some time with myself, my phone or social media, nothing will be, I will not be available. So if I communicate all of you, carefully, properly, nicely, then I switch up. You all will like it or not. Oh, Swami wants something, some time for himself. Whereas if I stop everything, now what will happen to me? What, forget about me. You all are. And when you people think, what happened to Swami? What happened to Swami? Now that impact will have, even if I want to sit down, keep quiet on this rock of mountain or rock of this uh, Ganga, what I'll think? What others are thinking? What are they doing? Not doing? You understand what I'm trying to say? And also that will be mess later on. I have to spend a lot of time. Maybe if I spend five days or ten days, later on I have to say spend one month to rectify. So that's why what is to be done is that's why beautiful is any time there is something I must look at my reflected ego or inflated ego sometimes. Then only I can see the difference. And why and how? Let us look at the next verse. He brings the concept of Maya in three verses. 
अव्यक्त नाम परमेश शक्ति अनाद्य विद्या त्रिगुणात्मिका परा कार्यानुमेया सुधी बया ये जगत सर्वद प्रसूय says look because we have very convenient way of looking at every time okay anything and everything happens you can pass on the bug to somebody so you can wash the hand okay after all everything is maya in india we have okay after all everything is god's creation so why to bother don't worry in fact we are born for all these things actually it helps a lot actually you know at least the mind doesn't think much so he says look don't worry abhyakta namni paramesh shakti anadi abhidya trigunatmika maya so this maya is something called abhyakta namni so namni means is called it is being considered as abhyakta on manifest Again, refer to first chapter of Panchadas. <laughs> Details we have discussed. Paramesha Shakti, the power of the Lord. Why? Because when the jiva is under the influence of ana avidya, that time the Lord becomes Maya Dharma. So Maya is under the control of the Lord. So that's why Paramesha Shakti and Anadi Avidya, beginningless ignorance, and is made up of Triguna Atmika, Triguna made up of three gunas, Sattva, Raja, and Tama, and of course superior to what? कार्य अनुमेय सो वेन इट इज सुपीरियर टू बिकॉज ऑल्सो दे आर इफेक्ट बिकॉज फ्रॉम द आज वी लुक एट नो वेरी वेल ऑलवेज द कॉज इज सुपीरियर टू द इफेक्ट सो दैट मीन्स द प्रोडक्ट दैट इज अवेलेबल माया क्रिएशन इज डेफिनेटली इनफीरियर दैन द माया दैट्स वाई यू हेव टू अंडरस्टैंड वाट वन हेज टू अंडरस्टैंड सुधिया एव मया जगत सर्वद प्रसूय सो वन हेज टू रियली अंडरस्टैंड विथ ए क्लियर इंटेलेक्ट दिस जगत मीन्स द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ माया डेफिनेट इज इनक्रियर दिस जगत हैपेन्स विथ सर्व एंटायर जगत द एंटायर क्रिएशन इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ माया मीन्स इज प्रोजेक्टेड आउट ऑफ माया दैट्स वाई Maya becomes superior than the jagat. Jagat becomes this creation, becomes being product, and Maya be, being the cause. Definitely, Maya takes over. And because of this reason, you have to look at this point that very carefully. Why and how? Very common example, sorry, common definition of Maya is being given, given like this. Maya. Ma means that which does not exist. Ya means that which exists. Simplest way. In reality, that which does not exist, but as though it exists, is called Maya. Like the cloth. In reality, cloth does not exist. Because if I take I all the thread, where is a cloth? There is nothing called cloth. So in reality, cloth does not exist, but still it exists. I am using it. I am able to cover myself. Same thing also, whole creation in reality does not exist, but as though it exists. That's why what you need to do. He says, "Look, let us read the next one, okay? 
सनाप्य सनाप्यु भयात्मिकानो भिनाप्य भिनाप्यु भयात्मिकानो संगाप्य नंगाप्य भयात्मिकानो महाभूता निर्वचनीय रूपा the concept of Maya is being highlighted. That very nicely. Sat na api asat na. This Maya is something. It is neither sat. Sat means existent. Not non-existence asat. Okay. Somewhere in between. Api ubhyat mika na. So, api ubhyat mika no no means now na. If indeed it is neither both. Same thing also. Bhinna api, abhinna api. It is not different. It is not the same either. Ubhyatmika, neither it belongs to both the natures. It is a very nice way of poetic language, okay? Sangha means angena saha. With part or without part. Means whole, complete. Ubhyatmika, in between. No. That means what? Mahabhuta anirvachaniya rupa. So Mahabhuta, Mahan Adhuta. It's the most wonderful thing too. At the same time, anirvachaniya rupa. Which is not really explainable. So Maya is something cannot be explained. Why and how? We'll see another verse of this Maya in tomorrow and we'll discuss more of it. Okay? Please close your eyes.